welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you are having a lovely week so far. I hope that you're all staying healthy, happy and strong. Students, uh, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Check us out there for the general IELTS. Visit us at gieltshelp.com. In this lesson, we are looking at IELTS speaking part one, talking about your uh, teachers. Welcome, Fuang. Hi, Elizabeth. Welcome, Gopu. Nice to see our members in the class. Hi, Anna. Riyadh, good to see many of our subscribers and our students with us uh, today. I hope you're all doing just fantastic. Okay, everybody, uh, we will be using the websites aehelp.com and gieltshelp.com uh, for speaking with students. This is aehelp.com here. Um, this is the academic IELTS version of our premium course. You can join the premium package by clicking the big red button that's just right above my head there. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access and it really doesn't cost much money. You get six full practice exams, over 100 video lessons, uh, interactive courses, tips, strategies, a lot more. So uh, click that button and join thousands of students that use our program daily uh, to succeed on their IELTS test. Uh, for the general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. It's this website here. Uh, again, same idea. The difference between the general and the academic IELTS exam, aside from the purpose, right? Academic is done for university, college, school usually. Uh, general is done for immigration. Um, and the big difference is the uh, writing task one and reading section one and two for the general IELTS. So those are the big differences, okay, between the two tests. Okay, again, we will be using these websites uh, momentarily, uh, so do check them out. You can try them for free as well by clicking the green buttons um, and uh, you'll be able to join the speaking session and practice your uh, speaking. So uh, be sure uh, to check that out. Okay. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, uh, you can use this code SPICE9 for a 10% discount on the websites. It's also, uh, I put it into the, uh, the chat, I pinned it at the top. Um, the apps, yes, of course, Academic IELTS Help, that will uh, link to the academic website. General IELTS Help will link to the General IELTS website. Those apps uh, also have lots of free content and then uh, you can join the premium version from the app also. Instagram, IELTS underscore AE help, G IELTS help. Lots there for you. If you have questions about our programs, about the IELTS exam, about English, um, definitely um, check out Adrian at aehelp.com, admin uh, at aehelp.com. Uh, or sorry, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com if you have questions, okay? All right, students, um, we've got a full uh, few days of uh, live classes starting right now with uh, speaking part one and then uh, tomorrow, members, we will have reading for you and uh, we'll have listening part three and part four for the subscribers. That's a continuation of last week's uh, listening class where we started with part one and two. Uh, and then we'll have speaking part two, speaking part three uh, for everyone there on Saturday. Um, again, uh, check out uh, our latest release. Uh, it's a brilliant uh, candidate from India. Um, she does a fantastic job on her IELTS test, so check that out. I'll copy that uh, URL into the chat. There you go, everybody. All right, Rabin, welcome, IELTS aspirant. Students, let's get into um, some speaking. So um, the IELTS uh, speaking section has three parts. Um, part one takes about five minutes. 
part two takes about four minutes and then part three takes about five six minutes so that's your division of time okay there are a couple of basic strategies that everybody can follow uh, to improve your band score or tips Okay, um, the first one is uh, show up to your exam early. Okay, uh, that can that one tip, and that's why I keep repeating it, can easily uh, be the difference of a half a band or even a full band score. So show up early, one hour before uh, to your exam. Okay, uh, in that time, um, practice. Okay, especially if you're shy, all right? Um, this is kind of an irony, right? Um, does everybody understand the word irony? What that means, it's a good word to know because uh, human existence itself is quite ironic. Um, and uh, if you accept irony and understand irony, and if you can be happy about irony, then you can live a happy life. Um, everybody knows what the word irony means. What is irony? Irony can be a type of humor, Anna, but it's not actually that. Uh, but if you can find it humorous, yeah, it's good for you. So what is irony? Irony is not not really a, not really humor, not necessarily, that's for sure. Irony is um, the opposite of what is expected occurs right so um it's not a movie <laughs> Riyadh. um it's not it, it's yeah alexander you can say a type of sarcasm it's the opposite of what is expected so you would think that you know um it should go this way but it goes the other way uh so what i'm saying here is uh, when you go to your ielts exam early you should practice with another candidate especially if you're shy like you know some people will say ironically they'll say but i don't want to speak with other people at the ielts exam because i'm shy right so and this is ironic because that's exactly when you should approach other candidates so that you can be brave with the examiner okay so um, this is this is the irony, right? So if you're already brave and you're going into the IELTS exam like, woohoo, I can do this. I'm going to talk this guy's ears off and give him the best answers he's ever heard or she's ever heard in her life. Um, then, yeah, I mean, it will still help to practice with other candidates, but at least you're confident, right? Um, if you're shy, if you're like, I, I, don't, I don't really want to like talk to other people, I just want to do this exam and get it done. And then your exam comes and you go into the exam room and you meet the examiner and you're like, hi. And the examiner's like, may I see your identification? And you're like, sure. And then the examiner is like, can I have your full name, please? And I'm like, it's Adrian Benedek. Then um, that's not the way you want to be, right? That's you want to be confident. So it's an irony, but especially if you're a shy person, you want to speak with other candidates, right? Does that kind of make sense? Okay. Angel says, I'm shy. Angel, that's exactly when you want to just... Put yourself forward, okay? So irony is the opposite of what you would expect or what you would conceive, right? Okay. All right, Carolina, welcome our chat moderator. Carolina says, yeah, that's true, be brave, okay? Confidence goes a long way in your IELTS exam, okay?
All right, um, so that's my first and most important tip um, of the class is be confident, show up early, build confidence by talking to people at the exam center in English, of course, right? Do not converse in your native language. That would be the opposite effect of what you would want to achieve, okay? All right, the second biggest tip that I can give you before the IELTS exam, okay, as you're walking in is this here, okay? Full original sentences that include explanations and quantification. Wow, that's a lot of information right there, right? So you want to always give a full sentence answer, use the question, okay? Give an explanation and reason for your answer and often give numbers, okay? So if the examiner asks me, how often do I read a book? Then I would say I read a book at least twice a week because I enjoy reading fantasy novels. Currently I'm reading Lord of the Rings and I've read about four hours of it this past week. There you go, okay? full original sentence including the explanation and quantification quantification means numbers remember to use numbers during your uh, speaking interview numbers are your friends okay all right okay everybody let's get into it um i often do a lot of um lead up uh, as i'm already <laughs> starting um in these classes uh, for speaking part one when we start the test uh, this time I do want to give you as much of an opportunity to speak as possible I think we learn from each other uh, very efficiently very effectively so let's get into the questions uh, first let's do the first I don't know three four uh, through the chat I'll give you feedback I'll look at some of your answers in the chat and then we'll do some live speaking okay so here we go, out speaking part one. You go into your exam, you're there early, you were warming up, you were practicing different questions with some other fellow students. And then the examiner says, um, okay, um, may I see your identification? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Okay, Shuns, your exam is on May 25th. Pay close attention, okay? So may I see your identification? Here's a band nine start for you, okay? So yes, gladly. Here is my passport and here are my credentials. Uh, please take a look, okay? So yes gladly here's my passport and here are my credentials please take a look excellent okay um nipa has this answer for us now make sure everybody that you're speaking so speak and repeat okay don't just listen speak and repeat i find people do way too much listening and watching these days and not enough speaking not enough writing so you have to express yourself okay uh, typing quick text messages and thumbs up it's great, but it doesn't constitute writing and speaking, okay? So I want you to speak. Speak like me. Okay, so lots of speaking. Speak and repeat. I speak English with a uh, North American West Coast accent. I'm Canadian, I'm on the West Coast. You will hear people speak English like me in Vancouver, in Seattle, in uh, Portland, Oregon, uh, Los Angeles. Okay. All right. Uh, Nipa, good. Nipa says yes, followed by a comma, right? Nipa, Nipa, yes, of course. Here is my passport. Please take a look. Good. Uh, next question What is your full name? Uh, my given name is. Janet and my uh, family name is uh, Smith. Uh, please call me Jan for short. Okay. So there you go. That's a nice full sentence answer. Uh, what is your full name? My given name is Janet. 
And my family name is Smith. Please call me Jan for short. Okay, good. Rabin says, my full name is Rabin Shri Vastab. Please call me Rabin. Good, Rabin. Shayaman Fininti says, my first name is Ayan and my surname is Bagum. Please call me Nipa. Uh, is that your nickname, Nipa? Oh, sorry, I see Nipa is your, okay, your first name. My given name is Nipa and my surname is Bagoon. Please call me Nipa. Okay, good. Fuang says, my given names are Fuang Kan and my family names are Ho Nguyen. Please refer to me as Fuang. That's very professional, Fuang. Very nice, okay? I'm Ultron X. Uh, says, my name is Akrit and my family name is Tapa Magar. Uh, please call me by my first name, Akrit. Okay, Akrit, very nice. Okay, so uh, please be smooth, confident when you present yourself. It's very important that you present your name with confidence, okay? All right, um, let's um, go to the next question. Who do you live with? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. So for instance, I live with my parents and two siblings. I have an older brother named Raphael and a younger brother, Mario. Okay, I live with them in a four bedroom detached home. All right. That would be your nice full sentence answer. Okay, so who do you live with? I live with my parents and two siblings. I have an older brother named Raphael and a younger brother, Mario. I live with them in a four bedroom detached home. Okay. All right, good. Angel says, at this moment, I live with my parents and my older brother, who is two years older than me. Nevertheless, I prefer to be independent, so these days I've been planning to rent my own flat. Okay, Angel, not bad. Um, the examiner is not asking you what you prefer, so be careful, okay? Let me give all of you a little bit of feedback from this because it's important okay a lot of people tend to make this mistake so uh, don't go off topic don't give information that is not asked for if you do that the examiner will interrupt you especially if you're doing it early in the interview they worry that they will not have time to finish the interview okay so um, take a look at this everyone. Angel, thank you, this is a good example here. So Angel says, at this moment, comma, when you start with a time expression, um, at this moment, I live with my parents and my older brother who is two years older than me. Uh, nevertheless, I prefer to be independent. Okay, so these days I've been planning to rent my own flat. Now this is okay. Um, however, you might get interrupted, especially if you're not really fluent. So if you're planning to give this kind of information, you have to be really concise, okay? What that means is you want to take all of this out and you simply want to just make this super fast and do this. All right? So at this moment, I live with my parents and my older brother who is two years older than me, but I've been planning to rent my own flat. There's no chance uh, for the uh, examiner to interrupt you. So um, the only way, keep this in mind, uh, everybody, okay? So the only way that you can um, add, um, unsolicited information to your answer is if you are fluent and concise. So I don't recommend doing it unless you can do it this way, okay? Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, so don't go off topic, especially not in the beginning. If you're gonna do it, 
do it really quick, really fluent, really concise, okay, before the examiner has a chance to interrupt you. Okay, yeah, thumbs up. Everybody clear on that? Yes, hopefully. Carolina says thumbs up. Okay. All right. Um, and then uh, let's skip the next question. We'll get some students to answer that. We'll get to part one here. So the examiner will say, I will ask you some questions on a general topic. Yeah, that's what the examiner will say. All right. Robin, that's right. Precise and concise. Those are the two key words in the IELTS, right? You want to be precise and concise while reflecting the grammar. Okay. All right. Um, so the examiner will say, let's talk about teachers. Okay. Now, as soon as you hear that topic, teachers, visualize and think of synonyms. and associated words. Okay, um, so before we jump into the question, uh, how can you say teacher? What's another way to say teacher? What are some different ways? The more you paraphrase, the more uh, vocabulary you're able to use accurately and in an original way, uh, the better you will do. Tutor, professor, mentor, lecturer, Instructor, very good. I was wondering when that one would come up. Educator, there we go, Robin. That's what I was looking for. Okay, trainer, yeah. There's one that nobody's said so far. How about coach? Coach is a type of teacher. Okay. Yeah, Mal, coach, there you go. All right, I'd love to uh, hear you use those, okay? All right, let's do it. Um, so, uh, the examiner says, who was your favorite teacher? Okay, um, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one, I'll give you one. So, Dr. Skinner, my biopsychology professor at the University of Victoria is my all-time uh, favorite uh, instructor because he was uh, very uh, passionate and he is extremely knowledgeable. I took uh, five courses from him and learned much about the connection between uh, physiology and behavior. All right, that's my answer. It's my honest answer. Um, I hold a degree in psychology and uh, I had a professor named Dr. Skinner and uh, he uh, was my bio, bio uh, psychology professor at the University of Victoria. So uh, here we go. Uh, Dr. Skinner, my bio psychology professor at the University of Victoria is my all time favorite instructor because he was very passionate and he is extremely knowledgeable. I took five courses from him and learned much about the connection between physiology and behavior. All right. Now, uh, Shayam uh, Infinity says, shouldn't we write in past simple as the question requires? I'm going to explain that, okay? Um, I'm not sure if he is still teaching at the University of Victoria. So uh, a couple of you are clever, clever. You're noticing, well, what about tense control or grammar, right? Because the question says, who was your uh, favorite uh, teacher? 
Okay, um, so that means in the past, uh, the question is asking because, um, you know, many of us might not be in school anymore, right? So uh, here we go. Let me explain this grammar to you that I'm using. So Dr. Skinner, uh, my biopsychology professor at the University of Victoria is my all time. The reason I use is is because he still is my favorite. Okay, so I'm using present simple tense. Um, now here, I say my all-time favorite instructor because he was. Okay, why? Because this is the past when he taught me. Okay, so past tense because it refers to the time when he was my teacher. He's no longer my teacher. I don't know if he's still teaching at the school. So I'm using the past tense that at that time he was really passionate or maybe, and I hope that's not true, he's no longer passionate. He got bored of teaching and he's like, welcome to the class students. The amygdala is responsible for emotional control. Adrenaline is secreted by the adrenaline gland when, so maybe, I don't know, <laughs> hopefully not, hopefully that, that did not happen to Mr. Skinner, but, uh, but uh, we never know, right? Because I don't see him anymore. So at that time he was very passionate and he is extremely knowledgeable and that is because I'm confident that he probably still is, okay? So I'm confident that he's still alive and uh, he still knows his uh, biopsychology. So he is likely, I mean, he wasn't that old. Okay. So, uh, that's the tense control and with advanced English, you do have that. Okay. So that information is communicated, uh, to the listener. Okay. Nipa, I hope that my teacher does not hear that. <laughs> um, so, uh, Dr. Skinner, my biopsychology professor at the University of Victoria, is my all-time favorite instructor because he was very passionate and he is um, extremely knowledgeable. I took five courses from him and learned much about the connection between psychology and behavior. Tense control, very important in good communication, okay? All right, uh, capital trade, how's this answer for us? Mr. Sanjay Sharaf, who taught me finance, is my fave professor. He prepared me for my CFA curriculum and helped uh, me get through all the levels. His methods of teaching are distinct and professional. Okay, very good. Uh, students, careful, okay? Uh, do not only, so explain acronyms, okay? All right, now many people do know that CFA is a certified financial advisor, I believe, um, but you still have to explain it, okay? or accountant. I believe, if, correct me if I'm wrong on that, capital trade, okay? So, but don't just use acronyms without explaining them, okay? Make sure you use the full term when you're speaking to. There are lots of acronyms in the world today. We have a lot of specializations. Uh, we have uh, a lot of, um, uh, ways to shorten what we say, okay? Uh, analyst, right? There you go. So capital trade says it's analyst, okay? Uh, so careful with that, okay? You have to explain it, all right? You don't want to confuse the examiner, okay? Uh, tipsy, if you are being asked a question you have no idea about, if you understand it, answer it. If you don't understand it, 
then say, I'm not clear about what you're asking. Please go to the next question. You should not do that more than once because it will really hurt your score, okay? But it's better than saying or giving silly information, okay? The worst situation is just giving completely weird information. Then the examiner will interrupt you anyways and go to the next question. So you're better off saying, I have no idea what you just asked me. Please go to the next question. That should not happen in part one, okay? All right, uh, let's jump to this question here, okay? Have you ever taught anyone? Yes. I have. I have been uh, coaching uh, children uh, basketball on the weekends um, at a local recreation uh, center. I do this as a volunteer work for uh, two hours on uh, Saturday evenings. Uh, for a group of uh, eight to ten year old uh, youth. Okay, there you go. Have you ever taught anyone? Yes, I have. I have been coaching children basketball on the weekends at a local recreation center. I, I do this as volunteer work for uh, two hours on Saturday evenings for a group of eight to 10 year old youth. Okay, notice the quantification again, those numbers coming in, right? Uh, notice the present perfect. Have you ever taught in the question? In my answer right away, yes I have. I have been coaching. Okay, so right away I use that present perfect. Uh, Gurkarat is asking, how do I increase my vocabulary for writing as well as speaking? Gurkarat, regular reading, okay? And I don't mean just short articles, but I mean like novels, okay? Novels create very connected pieces of information with vocabulary in our mind. So you want to read books, okay? Reading books uh, gives you rich vocabulary. So read lots of books, Gurkarat like full size books, okay? Find a book that you enjoy. It's very important that you enjoy the book that you're reading, all right? And then you'll do great. Owen Nguyen says, Yes, I have. I used to tutor my younger brother in math when he was a primary student because his marks were very bad. Thanks for this. I knew that I was not meant to be a teacher. Thanks uh, to this experience. I knew that I was not meant to become a teacher because I didn't really enjoy it. Okay, let's finish that idea. All right now on good you use the present perfect even though it was really short you just said yes I have and students uh, accurate writing even in chat okay so uh, you still use the present perfect which is really good one all right and Lynn says yes uh, currently, I'm an English tutor for primary and secondary students. This really helps me to determine my career path as I want to become an English teacher in the future. On, uh, that's really good. To make it even better, use the present perfect, okay? Even if it's current, you can say, yes, currently, I'm an English tutor for primary and secondary students. I have been doing this for the past two years, okay? This And this really helps me uh, determine my career path as I want to be an English teacher in the future. Uh, well, you're already an English teacher, so I'm guessing you want to be a certified. Like to have a degree or diploma in English teaching, right? Okay. Logic, context, very important. It's like, hmm, are you not an English teacher right now then? Yes, you are, but you want to be a certified English teacher, okay? All right. 
So, yeah, Nira Paul, reading just the Cambridge IELTS exam reading passages is not enough uh, to become an expert or become very good in English. So uh, for those of you who want to get 7.5 and higher in your IELTS exam, don't just do IELTS exams to prepare, but actually speak in English as much as possible and read books in English, watch movies in English, okay? So immerse yourself in the English language. All right, so students, as you can see, we've got a few other questions that haven't been answered here, and we are looking for those high band answers, and I will be giving sample responses for you to practice, and I'm going to do it with your help. Uh, we're going to do this through volunteering, okay? So the first step here is to go to the website aehelp.com, all right? Let's do that one more time. There we go. Um, I just put the URL into the chat and Carolina, between my two comments, has all of the instructions for you. So uh, you go to the website aehelp.com. Again, you can join the premium version of our course by clicking that big red button. It is a one-time payment. You get lifetime access. It's absolutely worth it, especially if you join these live classes regularly because the tests that we use are there, like the reading that we're doing tomorrow, the listening that we're doing tomorrow, it's all there, okay? We are an IDP affiliate, we are a British Council partner and an IELTS test registration center. And you can click the link in the video description or in the chat, the pinned link, to get the premium version of the course. For general IELTS students, it's the same idea, but the green background, gieltshelp.com. Once you are in the course, you're in your My Student account, um, you have lots of goodies, computer-based practice exams, an interactive course, study plans, uh, workbooks, lesson videos, you've got audio CDs, and you've got additional services for going to university. Then on the right, you've got IELTS Task 1, Task 2 editing services. You've got speaking interview practice with a native English speaking tutor. And right now, we're using this one here. And this is the uh, student partner speaking. So click on that. Click the accept, it means that you're responsible for your words. And then you will see all of your fellow peers in here. So Harpreet is in here, a premium student. Call Winder is a premium student. Uh, we've got Thu in here, Juan Pablo, Huang, Anahita. We've got lots and lots of students in here. Uh, I'm going to put on my ears. Now, you see those kind of orange numbers popping up? Those are people that are sending me a message saying they want to volunteer. You can send me a message by clicking the blue button next to my handle. Uh, my handle will be uh, master. Whoa, master, like that. You'll see me there. Uh, click the blue button next to my handle and then say, I want to volunteer, I'd like to try. And then I will uh, pick and we'll go. Um, Anahita, let's try Anahita, a premium student. She's studying hard. Let's talk to Anahita, see if she's there. Anahita, are you ready? Anahita's definitely got the right approach to get a good band score. She's using this chat to speak with other students and practice with them. This is for everybody to use, right? To speak to each other. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Pradeep, yes you can join. You just have to go to the website. Anahita, if you're there, pick up the phone, pick up the ring, check the mic, check your setup. All right, Anahita, uh, not quite sure what's happening there. I'm just gonna jump to somebody else. Um, check your settings, maybe refresh your page and then I'll circle back to you. Okay, uh, let's try Yash. Yash might be somebody new. Are you ready? 
Yeah, always test your mic, make sure everybody has your settings enabled, right? So, uh, especially if you're on mobile, it can be a little bit tricky. Hello, Yash. Let me get my other ear on. Yash, I can't hear you. Sounds like you picked up, but I don't hear your voice. So you have to check your audio mic settings. Make sure you enabled it. I'll circle back to you. Okay, so I've got Yash and, um, and uh, uh, Anahita on my radar here. Uh, let's try Juan. We're usually able to get a good connection with Juan. That will let me know if it's something maybe on my end. Okay, uh, Juan, are you ready? I was doing a video show. Let me check and make sure my headsets are right here. Don't call me, I'll call you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my headset's good. We'll soon find out though. All right. Hello? Hi Juan, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you for asking. What about you? I'm doing good, especially now that you confirmed that my headset's working. I was a little bit worried there because <laughs> I was plugging it in different ports uh, yeah. over the weekend. What's Maybe going on? Is there a connection? Yeah, it could be the connection. I mean, there's so many moving parts, right? That's why I always say, you know, really test the system. And it's good advice for everybody to just check with somebody else, like type somebody else a message and say, hey, let's ask each other a question and confirm mm -hmm. that it works. Uh, Juan, um, you are in Argentina, right? Yes. All right. Um, and um, when are you planning to do the IELTS exam? I know you're studying for it uh, quite uh, regularly these days. Yeah, I'm actually studying because I think it's preparing for the IELTS is uh, great for my English. Uh, I, don't, I don't have set uh, a date uh, yet, but maybe in the next, uh, in the next six months. Okay. I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure. Sure, yeah, no, IELTS, I, I agree with you 100%. So um, IELTS is a great way to measure intermediate to advanced English. And um, it's certainly a good, um, how should I say this, assessment program for just academic and professional global English communication. So yeah, I agree with you there. All right, mm -hmm. well, let's jump into it. I'll ask you some questions and I will give you some feedback. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner. For part one, I will ask you some questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. May I see your identification? Sure, here it is. It's the same uh, passport I use for registration. What is your full name? My name is Juan Pablo Avila, but you can call me Juan. Who do you live with? I reside with three family members, my sister Elizabeth, my other sister Claudia, and my little niece, who is just a baby, she is two year old. Uh, we live in a two story single family home, not too far from downtown. Where do you go to relax? I usually go to a nice cafe, which is five blocks away from my house. Uh, there, uh, the ambience uh, and is very relaxing to me because they put really good music. And also the customer service is, uh, I think it's outstanding. Uh, for example, yesterday after studying for six hours, I went there to, to relax and to have a coffee with the sounds. And I spent a couple of hours just uh, listening to music and watching people pass by. Okay, I'm gonna stop there and give you some feedback. Uh, that was good, Juan. All right, so everybody paying attention. Um, that would be um, easily a band 7.5, more like a band eight. So uh, I, what I like to say is if 10 examiners sat in my chair and heard you speak, I would infer that uh, six of them, five, six would give you a 7.5 and four or five would give you a 
band eight. So that would be my assessment. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very, for those high bands, everybody should know that those higher bands, like anything past 7.5, so 8, 8.59, the differences are very small and it's quite tricky um, depending on the examiner. So for instance, if somebody gets a 7.5, but they need an eight because they want to be a teacher, we had a person like that a couple of weeks ago trained with us, then it is worth getting um, an an inquiry on results, if that's the difference, um, because uh, uh, another examiner might listen to it and say, yeah, no, that's more of a band 8 than a band 7.5. So it becomes much more subjective at those high band scores. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me explain um, Juan's score here. Okay, first of all, I asked you, may I see your identification? And now clearly you're very fluent. Um, Your fluency is like an 8.59. Your pronunciation is an 8.59. Your words are very, very clear, easy to understand. Um, Your grammatical accuracy is closer to an eight um, and Mm -hmm. coherence was a Uh, 7.5. 7.5 of course is between good and very good. So it's still, you know, quite strong. Uh, I said, may I see your identification? You said, sure, here it is. And then you kind of hesitated and you said, it's the same passport I use for registration. Now that's okay English, but it's just a little bit awkward. And for those band 8.5s, 9s, Juan, you cannot have awkward English. It can't. Mm-hmm. So e- even even accurate English or correct English can be awkward English. So for band eight, band nine, it cannot be awkward English. It has to be excellent English. Um, it's the same passport I use for registration makes me smile in my head as the examiner because it's kind of like well i hope it is i hope you're not using somebody else's passport (laughs) you use a different one one, Uh, you've got more than one right so it's like so uh instead of it's the same passport right i would say this is uh the passport right so it's like this passport right it's not the same one because that that raises the question of how many passports do you have? What's going on here? Are you an international spy? Uh, yeah, so. I, I, I was about to say uh, it's the same document, uh, but I I don't know. I just said passport. And that one little difference is the difference between a 7.5 and a 9, right? Because the same document would be perfect. That would be uh-huh. 9, especially for those countries where you can use not just a passport, but you can use your national ID card or another piece of government issued ID. So, um, so yeah, that's the difference. Okay. Um, all right. Um, then I said, who do you live with? And you said, I reside with my, I reside with three family members reside very nice vocabulary. It means live nice paraphrasing. And then you said my sister, her name, my other sister, uh, Claudie and my niece. Now I got a little bit suspicious here. Are there any adults living with you or, or one of your sister's adults like where's the parents if you don't mind me asking yeah i i should i should talk about the the races uh, they are actually older than me so um yeah so, uh, the, the baby is one of my sister's daughter oh okay now that makes a lot of lot more sense so yeah because i don't know you right so i don't know who's the <laughs> adult here and it was just a little bit a little bit strange for me, right? So, um, so that would have made more sense. A little bit more explanation. So you could have said my sister, um, who uh, rents the place, her daughter, myself, and my niece. We all live together. Um, okay, and um, I don't want to be nosy, so I'm I'm not going to ask why your parents aren't there. But a little bit of clarification. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so that would have been better context there. Uh, and then um, here where I said, where do you go to relax? You said, I usually go to a nice cafe. That was really good, which is five blocks from my house. Awesome quantitative language. This is what I suggest everybody to do is to include these numbers. The ambience is very relaxing. I love that word, ambience. You're picking up scores, left, right, center. So getting into those nice high band scores. Um, and then you said, uh, very relaxing to me. Um, that's awkward, the to me. Mm. Okay. So we want to take that out. Just very relaxing. It's intrinsic that it's to you. If you say to me, it's kind of weird. Like who else would you be talking about? Right? So in natural English, we don't say to me. 
okay? It's just, the ambience is very relaxing. For me is okay, but usually we don't say that, okay? Mm -hmm. So so you just wanna say the ambience is very relaxing. So kind of keep it, I know that in um, Spanish, um, the pronoun is often more detailed like it's added more often than in english in english we omit the pronouns like to me more often than in spanish so spanish speakers pay attention to that okay mm -hmm. uh put on good music was very nice phrasal verb put on means to play music right um and then you said watching people pass by a band nine candidate would say what what do you think do you know this expression juan um let me think uh, i like to go there uh, for there's an expression in english for this people watching okay mm, i don't know yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's new for you that's why because it's new for you um so a pop culture expression when people go to a cafe and sit and just look at the passers-by um it's people watching it's literally like a hobby people have this hobby that's how that's how bored some people are in in north america especially <laughs> is they will go to a cafe and just watch people <laughs> maybe it's a hobby in other countries too i don't know but it's actually a, it's actually a hobby for people here in canada and the us to just go to a cafe mm -hmm. sit down and watch people as they do their daily chores and errands so people watching so just repeat after me everybody you can repeat this learn this okay so i like to go to the cafe for people watching i like to go to the cafe to for people watching yeah one more time i like to go to the cafe for people watching i like to go to the cafe for people watching yeah and sometimes people do this in pairs like uh, you and i Juan, we could go to the cafe, sit down, watch people, and then talk about them and be like, oh, see that woman over there? I think she's very lonely, right? And she looks like she's really lonely. And then people have these little discussions about the people that I, they're looking at. So I, don't know. I, I think that's the point. I mean, uh, we, we get to talk about other people and maybe sometimes judge other people and outfits and all that. Yeah, it's a bit of gossiping, right? It's called gossip. Yeah. We're gossiping about other people. And it helps us relax, right? It, it takes our mind off of our own problems and issues. So people watching, try it out, everybody. It's fun. <laughs> All right, Juan, thank you for volunteering and for sharing your English. That's great. Keep practicing, okay? Yeah. Okay, I will. Thanks, okay. Adrian. Bye, Juan. See you later. All right, that was fun. Again, you can practice with others. Uh, let's see. Uh, Anahita, let's see if Anahita figured out our connection. Um, Anahita says, I refreshed my page. And sometimes that's all it takes is a quick refresh. Are you ready, Anahita? Let's try it another time. I Like I say, I keep my promises. So Anahita says yes. Hi, sir. Can you hear me? I can. That page refresh definitely did the trick, Anahita. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How about you, sir? I'm doing fantastic. Anahita, you are in Ontario, right? Yes, sir. Ontario, Canada. Uh, yes. wh where are you from originally, Anahita? I'm from Afghanistan. Afghanistan, that's right. Anahita, have you tried people watching in Ontario? Uh, yes, I do it from my uh, living room, which is uh, look at which is located uh, in the same room with my kitchen. The, our room has indeed a very, uh, a very stunning view of the outside. And people are walking by and then you check out what yeah. they're doing and chat about them a little bit. Oh, it's a weird looking little dog that person has. Uh, I wonder if they, yeah. Actually, I cannot chat with them because uh, I'm uh, in a high uh, building room. I am living in a high building room, building. Mm -hmm. Condo. So, uh, which floor? And, uh, yeah, I am my I live in the 14th floor. 14th floor, that's my lucky yeah. number. That's my birthday. 14th floor. So, you're people watching from the 14th floor. Do you have binoculars? A uh, study, do you have binoculars? And uh, binoculars uh, are those um special lenses that let you see really far. Uh, binoc uh no, no, no. binoculars no, look don't. like this, they look like that. No, I don't have that. You don't have that. You should get some. That makes people watching even more fun. You can like 
scope them from far away and spy on them. All right, I'm play. I'm kidding with you, Anahita. You need to, you know, happy. But <laughs> but people do that. People do. <laughs> people watch with uh, with binoculars. All right, Anahita. Let me ask you a couple of questions about teachers. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay, let's do it. Let's talk about teachers. Uh, who was your favorite teacher? My ideal. Uh, my my ideal teacher was Hatsukawa Sensei, a Japanese woman. Uh, in my third grade, uh, the reason was that uh, she was always teaching our lessons in a way that uh, we could uh, learn them with enthusiasm, enthusiasm, enthusiasm. Uh, and uh, I, however, I was the only foreign child in my uh, class. I had learned uh, uh, the Japanese language very well. Where do you learn from a teacher? Uh, can you repeat, please? Where do you learn from a teacher? Uh, we can learn uh, from a teacher both online and off, uh, offline. Uh, I'm. Uh, I learned my. Uh, I uh, when I was at school, I graduated and learned from uh, teachers, uh, from educators, by. Uh, attending classes physically, but now I am preparing for my IELTS and uh, learning from uh, online teachers and uh, both are uh, really uh, uh, effective for uh, getting feedbacks and uh, getting invaluable feedbacks and uh, reaching to a high position. Okay, let me stop there. All right, um, so good, Anahita, you're improving. Uh, you're starting to get more fluent. Some of your sentences are coming out a little bit smoother. Um, you're still struggling here and there, uh, but, um, but definitely a lot smoother. So the more you speak, the better you're getting. That's excellent. Um, all right, let me uh, reflect on your answers a little bit. So uh, I said, who was your favorite teacher? You said, my ideal teacher was, that's okay. Yeah, it's good to use ideal in that way. It's not common, but it's, accurate. So my ideal teacher was uh, Hansei. Um, she was, there's some grammatical mistakes, small ones, not big ones, but she was a Japanese uh, woman uh, in my third grade. She was always teaching our lessons in such a way that we could learn them with enthusiasm. Okay, uh, very nice. By the way, your vocabulary is really improving. Um, Anahita, so you're you're doing a much better job of not only using better words but using them accurately. So good for you. Okay. And then I asked you, where do you learn from a teacher? You started the answer very nice and fluent. So you said we can learn from a teacher. Uh, make sure you make it personal. Okay, especially in part one, I can learn from a teacher both online and offline. I learned. Now um, here, Anahita, you can connect. So one way to be more fluent and to just keep um, speaking. Um, in a bit of an easier way. Uh, just connect your answer to your previous one. So I learned uh, Japanese in class, face-to-face uh, -face, uh, from uh, Ms. Uh, Hansei. Um, but now I'm attending classes online and it's very effective for getting uh, valuable feedback and learning um, at any time, okay? So uh, just do lots of repetition. Anahita, one way to improve your fluency um, is to go back and to repeat the same answer, repeat the same question. So let's just do that for this one here, okay? I'm going to say the question, I'm going to say the answer, and then just repeat the answer. Here we go. So where do you learn from a teacher? I can learn from a teacher both on and offline. I learn Japanese in class face-to-face -face from Ms. Hansai. But nowadays, I take many courses online. Try it. Uh, can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, I'll repeat the answer instead. So um, listen for it. I can learn from a teacher both on and offline. I learned Japanese in class face-to-face -face from Ms. Hansei. But now, I take many courses online, and it's very effective for feedback. Try it. Uh, I learn uh, Japanese. I learn. I I learn both online and off, on and offline from teach, from a teacher. Uh, I learned the Japanese language from 
my teacher Hatsukawa Sensei, uh, physic in person, and uh, now I am learning. Uh, I am attending uh, IELTS online IELTS class and getting invaluable feedbacks. Okay, good. Now, you're still getting stuck here and there. So what you want to do, Anahita, is you want to keep repeating until you're no longer getting stuck, okay? And it might be three, four, five times. Once you do that, eventually your brain will click and it'll start to rotate in English. And then you will have to just repeat less and less until you're suddenly doing it only one time and you're speaking smoothly. So make sure to practice this, okay? Where you're repeating, repeating until it's coming out nice and smooth. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And um, how about my band score? So, like, a, your, I thought I said it, <laughs> your score would be yeah, about yeah. a 6.5, 6 to 6.5, okay? Okay, lastly, it was 7.5, I think it decreased because I hadn't prepared this time. The questions were different. Absolutely. So, again, there's no guarantees, just keep practicing, okay? Okay, sir. All right, bye, Anahita. Bye, have a good day, sir. All right, that was Anahita, very nice. Okay, um, let's see. Anybody at the bottom of the list? Let's try somebody else. Don't call me. I will call you. Uh, Amna. Let's see if Amna's there. Amna, are you ready? Maybe we'll find somebody new right now. Thumbs up for Anahita. Thank you, Carolina. I appreciate that. Fuang as well. Alexander, thank you. Even a bouquet of flowers from uh, Alexander. Very nice courteous gentlemen um, all right uh, so uh, Amnam if you are there let me know give me a sign I'm not sure if you're still hanging out with us but if you are um, then um, let me know give me a sign all right we're not getting anything from Amna so let's try Ishika Are you there, Ishika? Yes. Let's try Ishika. Ishika picked up really fast, but I don't hear any voice. Ishika. If you're there, let me know. Again, uh, just like Anahita, you might want to refresh your page, especially if you've had the page open a long time. Um, then uh, it's a good idea to do a quick refresh. Ishika? I can't hear you. Ishika, can you just refresh your page and join again? So I'll look for you. Let's try that. Let's see if that works. Ishika, uh, do a refresh and then send me a message and say I've refreshed my page. Sometimes it's just a matter of uh, relinking to the server. So once you refresh, uh, and it's a good idea to do like a shift refresh, so it clears your cache. Okay, so um, Ishika, let's try it again. Okay, Ishika says I refreshed my page, let's do it. Hello, Ishika. Nope. I uh, still can't hear you, Ishika, so maybe um, check with another student, see if it could be a mic issue or some other issue. You might have to use a VPN if you have a block nationally. Uh, Guru Karat is saying um, ambience. Ambience is the mood, okay, Guru Karat? Like the mood, the feeling that a place gives you. That's the meaning of ambience, ambience, the feeling that it gives you. Okay, um, Ishika, uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's not it's not happening for us. Uh, let's try Amna. Amna, are you ready? Okay, Priyunsha, the easiest way to rephrase statements is to use the question. Use the question. Hi, Amna. How are you? Uh, I'm good, sir. 
Awesome. Amna, where are you calling from? I am from Pakistan and well, I am kind of a bit uh, I'm nervous, you can say that, because it's my first time I'm talking to someone like that. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Amna, for uh, being brave and for um, checking in. That's great. That's the best way to build confidence. Why are you taking the IELTS exam? Uh, I'm I'm trying to um, uh, study abroad. I'm planning to study abroad, so that's why I'm taking IELTS, so that I can apply in uh, universities that are uh, good. All right. What do you plan to study? Uh, I'm planning to study business. Okay. In, yes, in different countries like uh, Canada, so I want to do IELTS for that. Great. Well, let me help you a little bit. I will ask you some questions. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, let's talk about teachers. What is important to be a good teacher? I think uh, to be a good teacher um, is uh, a good teacher always inspire uh, their students. So, uh, as uh, if we want to become a good teacher, so we have a good communication skills with uh, the students so we can connect with them so we can convey our message to them clearly and precisely so uh, there are other good qualities of a good teacher like uh, they should be uh, punctual and um, they are good to deliver their uh, um, their lecture that they are want that they want to deliver have you ever taught anyone uh, yes, I uh, I taught um, many um, students from different grades. I used to um, study them. Um, I used I was a tutor of uh, English. All right, let me just uh, take these two questions and give you a bit of feedback, and then uh, we'll practice improving the answers a little bit, Amna. Okay, Amna, you've got good English, obviously. You've been an English teacher, and so you have vocabulary, clearly. Uh, you have nice pronunciation. I can definitely understand your words very well, very easily. Um, and your answers are okay. They need a bit more detail, they need a bit more clarity, and they need a bit more control. I'll explain that to you. So I said, what is important to be a good teacher? You said, I think um, to be a good teacher, a good teacher always inspires, and that's nice, natural English. You can change up your um, answer in that way, okay? Uh, before you begin speaking, have a clear answer in your head. So if you feel that inspiration is one communication is another then think of those clearly and then start speaking you're fluent and the examiner will know that anyway okay uh, also at your level you should paraphrase some words like I think uh, to be an excellent teacher so paraphrase good right an excellent teacher um, a good teacher always inspires their students and then here you changed your pronouns you said if you want to be uh, don't use the word you in your IELTS exam because now you're suddenly talking to me, right? Okay. And uh, I'd like to believe I'm doing a good job as a teacher. I don't know because um, now you're talking about me, right? But even worse is that you, you said if you and then you switched it again, we. So okay. when you jump around with your pronouns like you, we, I, now your listeners confuse like who are we talking about? And it's quite ironic because you're actually talking about communication skills, right? So, so you don't you don't want to be mixing your pronoun when you're giving advice about communication skills. Okay, so, I was a bit nervous, so I mixed up. Sure. Uh, so the strategy is uh, stick to what's called your subjective pronouns. Okay, subjective pronouns uh, means like um, if an instructor. So uh, any of those synonyms like uh, teacher, instructor, coach, right? To so if an instructor wants to be a good teacher, uh, they need to be. They need good communication skills so they can uh, deliver information precisely. A good teacher is punctual because 
this sets a standard for effective learning. So we want to finish that idea, okay? And then you can give an example. I always arrive to my classes on time, right? So you define the word punctual um, and uh, give the example, and now it's a much higher band score, okay? So your band level is about a seven to 7.5, okay? It's definitely around a seven. I think you can get an eight as long as you pay a bit more attention to your content, okay? I'm not? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Let's try this answer. So I think to be an excellent teacher, a good teacher always inspires their students. If an instructor wants to be effective, they need good communication skills so they can deliver the information precisely. And they're punctual to set a standard for effective learning. I always arrive to my classes on time. Let's try it, Amna. What is important to be a good teacher? Um, I have to read it aloud or I have to speak it on my own? Speak it on your own and repeat what I say. At your level, at the upper intermediate level um, to advanced level, Amna, you want to always listen to what the instructor is saying and then repeat it. Not verbatim. It doesn't have to be word for word. It just has to be the same content. So I'm going to say it one more time. This is for everybody. Repeat it as closely as possible once I'm finished, okay? So okay. I think to be an excellent teacher, a good teacher always inspires their students. If an instructor wants to be outstanding, they need good communication skills to deliver the information precisely and to be punctual so that they set a standard for effective learning. I always arrive to my classes on time. Okay, so I... Um, okay, so uh, ask the question, please. What is important to be a good teacher? Uh, I think to be a good teacher uh, should be punctual. An instructor should be uh, should have a good communication skill skill to uh, convey their message. And I am uh, I I I always uh, I always uh, on time. Sorry, I'm a bit confused. That's okay. I'm just, uh, I always arrive on time and deliver my instructions coherently yes actually you are the uh, first uh, tutor uh, as i'm talking to and i'm taking i'm you know i'm very regular on your youtube videos so you are the only one i'm learning from um, no, I'm flattered that you're saying that. That's awesome. And you're doing a really great job. And I know, you know, it's the first time you're doing it. I'm putting all this pressure on you. I'm just going to give you one more piece of advice, Amna, before um, uh, we part ways. This next question, have you ever taught anyone? You answered it well, but you didn't use the present perfect. So make sure to use the present perfect. Just simply say, yes, I have. I have taught many students. So practice this with me. Have you ever taught anyone? Uh, yes, I taught many students. No, 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 not not simple past, present perfect. Yes, I have. Uh, I have taught many students. Have you ever taught anyone? Yes, I have taught many students. Okay, much better. All right, present perfect questions always aim to answer them with present perfect. Okay. Okay, and I have never taught anyone. I'm just assuming it as you have uh, guided in one of your videos that we have to assume I we just can't say no 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 I can't uh, I have never taught anyone so yeah. I assume it's better. It's better, Amna. It's better to take the positive side. And um, especially in this situation, chances are that you have taught someone. I mean, even if it's just a short lesson, most of us, even by the time that we're teenagers, we have taught somebody to play a sport or we have taught somebody to, uh, I don't know, do some kind of a hobby like cooking or uh, teach somebody how to do, you know, sewing. So most of us have taught at least one skill to a brother, a sister, a friend but you just have to come up with it so definitely thinking of positive answers is better for sure you have the right idea okay okay all right Amna thank you for volunteering and big thumbs up for being brave come back again okay okay all right Goodbye. 
Bye, Amna. All right, let's give Amna a thumbs up. That's uh, she's so brave, right? That was really good. All right, um, Harpreet, so anxious, Harpreet. Uh, Harpreet, I'm going to refresh my page. Uh, if you're still there, I just did a shift refresh myself. Um, let's see, there's Harpreet. Okay, Harpreet, are you ready? Uh, we'll see if we can connect with Harpreet. Thank you, Nirpal. Nirpal says, good job, Amna. Absolutely. Harpreet, if you're there, let's give this a go. Harpreet, I can't hear you. It definitely sounds like you picked up, and I just refreshed my page, so hoping that we can make a connection. All right, Harpreet, you know what? Can refresh your page as well, and then if it doesn't work, it means that you're either being blocked by some kind of a, a system um, through a, yeah, I can see that uh, you're not hearing me. I think it's on your end, Harpreet, so refresh your page, and then I'll, I'll try, okay? Here, you know what? I'll refresh my page again as well. There. All right. Let's see. Did you read? Oh. Harpreet's not there. Maybe Harpreet's refreshing right now. There he is. All right. Let's do it now. You know what? I'll just call you. Sometimes when you refresh too, you're, you route through a different country. Hi, Harpreet. Hi, sir. There you are. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. That refresh did the trick. Yeah. The internet is like water. It finds different paths at different times. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. I am very glad to talk to you. I'm glad to talk to you too, Harpreet. Harpreet, did I see correctly you have an exam coming up soon? Yes, on Saturday. On Saturday. Woo. Close indeed. Wow. I'll keep my fingers crossed that you get an awesome score, okay? Okay, sir. Are you going to practice lots until Saturday? Uh, sure, sir. Doing lots and lots of practice every day? Uh, uh, yes, a little bit. Uh, I am busy with my father on uh, farm. So actually I am preparing cue card mostly. Okay, that's because, good. Because uh, on... Yes. Are you are you using your phone? Like when you're working on the farm, do you have a headset that you can use that's playing like English lessons and so on? Yes, sir. I, I listen BBC Learning English and sometimes I listen news. Okay. Lots of repetition too. Okay. So while you're listening and doing your work, um, do pay attention. Don't injure yourself, of course. Uh, but... Uh, or somebody else, but um, uh, while you listen, also speak and repeat, right? So don't just listen, but talk also, okay? Okay, sir. All right. Okay, um, Arpreet, let's do this. Um, by the way, just before we get into it, what do you farm? What kind of agriculture do you do? Sir, uh, 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 there is a... Uh, Paddy crop uh, in our farm, and we what uh, we do watering nowadays because there's too much hot every day, increasing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so it's necessary to uh, keep watering to a uh, paddy field. Yeah, water is life, right? So absolutely okay. All right, um, let's do this. So Harpreet, are you ready? Of course, uh, sure, sir. of course, sir. Awesome. All right. Have you ever taught anyone? Certainly, I was. Uh, I have a six month uh, experience as a teacher in CBSE school, and I taught uh, to uh, mm -hmm. junior children one to uh, uh, one to six class in English medium, and uh, I taught mathematics to kids. If you could teach any subject, what would it be? Well, I just said that uh, I uh, taught uh, mathematics because uh, I love mathematics and it's my favorite subject. Uh, I have done also bat uh, Bachelor of Science with mathematics. So that's, uh, I, uh, I am skillful uh, to uh, 
I am perfect for solving mathematics, and uh, I taught uh, to, uh, children to uh, mathematics. Okay. All right. That is the end of part one. Good. Okay. Let me give you some feedback. So you'll get a band six with that, with those two answers for sure, because you're fluent. Uh, you might do a little bit better too. Just be confident, okay? I can tell that you're a little bit nervous, Harpreet. So uh, definitely, definitely on Saturday, go to your exam early. How early are you going to your exam, Harpreet? So actually, my exam on 2 p.m. and I will try to go on 11 a.m. Good. So that All right. I can practice with uh, other children. Mm -hmm. Other candidates, yes, absolutely. Okay, that's very smart. All right, take some papers awesome. with yeah, you. Yeah. Practice, yes. Um, okay, so I said, uh, or I asked, have you ever taught anyone? You said, certainly, I have a six months experience. I have six months uh, experience as a teacher in CBSC school. What is CBSC school? Sir, actually, it's a uh, Central Board uh, Secondary Education School. Okay, that's and what you need to say. Uh, so don't shorten it. Don't say CBSE. Don't, don't, again, remember I said this earlier in the class. Don't use acronyms that are confusing because I have no idea what that means. So say the full term. And it's actually good because um, you're giving me more lexical resource. Uh, what did you call it? Center? So a center education, I think. Uh, yes, center education of uh, secondary education. Okay, center of secondary. What's the board B for? of uh, secondary? Center. I, 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 I am not. Okay, I'm I got you. Yeah, central not sure. board. Central board of secondary education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you say uh, central board of secondary education, I can give you lots of uh, marks for that kind of an expression or name. Okay, um, because it's much more expressive than saying CBSE. Okay, yes, so much better. So don't shorten terms, okay? Um, and then use the present perfect. So say, I have taught uh, juniors from grades one to six, okay? Or I had, if you don't teach anymore, use past perfect, and it's still better to use past perfect than no perfect form when the question is in perfect form, okay? So I'm going to say this, just repeat after me, Heartbreed, okay? So certainly, I have six months experience as a teacher uh, in the Central Board of Secondary Education. I have uh, taught juniors from grades one to six. Have you ever taught anyone? Yes. I have a six month experience as a uh, teacher in Central Board Secondary Education. Mm -hmm. I had taught mathematics to juniors where I, from where grades I have, 1 to 6. Uh, where, I, where I have taught in mathematics to children and it was my favorite subject. Okay. Good, so much better, it's much more on track, okay? That's what you want to aim for and then you can get up into the six, five, seven range. Just careful with that fluency. Now, uh, math is your um, area of study, so there's a good chance that you're going to be talking about math in your upcoming speaking exam, okay? Because that's what you do. So you went to school for math, you've taught math. Uh, I'm guessing this is true, right? This is true, you, you did math in university and you taught this, yes? Yes, sir. Sure. Okay, awesome. Okay, so Harpreet, what you want to do, especially when it's a topic that you will likely mention in your speaking test, is you want to make sure that you can talk about it well in English. So what's another way to say mathematics in English? Sir, so, maths. Yeah, there's some other ways though. What's some other way? Maybe somebody can help you in the chat. What's another word for mathematics? Somebody help out Harpreet here. Starts with an A. Next letter is an R. Not algebra. Algebra and as a specific type of math. Yeah. Arithmetic. Yes, okay. Arithmetic. Do you do you know the word arithmetic? It's a synonym for math, mathematics, arithmetics. Okay. And one way that we um, uh, talk about math is numbers, and we also call math the universal language. 
okay? Those are all different words. So for so this is a good tip for you, Harpreet, for Saturday. Uh, if questions come up about math, make sure to use these words. So not just math, but use the word arithmetic, numbers, universal language. So for this question, if you could teach any subject, what would it be? Um, well, uh, as I just said, I taught arithmetic. Okay. Yes, um, because I love numbers. Of and course I love numbers. Math is my favorite subject. Okay. Uh, and I am very good at it. Okay, so just repeat this after me. Okay. Well, given the chance, I would teach math because as I just said, I taught arithmetic. I love numbers and math is my favorite subject. I have done a Bachelor of Mathematics and I'm very good at it. Try it. If you could teach any subject, what would it be? Given the chance, uh, I, I will taught mathematics because I love numbers and it's my favorite subject. Mm -hmm. I have done a Bachelor's in Arithmetic. I have done a bachelor's in arithmetics in 2019. And I'm very good at it. And I am very glad. I'm very good at it. I am very good at it. All right, so Harpreet, uh, over the next couple of days, when you're practicing your speaking for your upcoming test, make sure to use these synonyms for math, okay? So learn the language of math and English, okay? And make sure that you can use that confidently. That will definitely help your score, I think, especially in part one, okay? Of course, sir. All right, Harpreet, again, good luck and thumbs up uh, for your test that's coming, okay? Thank you, sir. <laughs> you're very welcome. <laughs> Bye, Harpreet. Sir? Uh, uh, I have one question, sir. Fire away. Sir, uh, sir, when uh, a examiner will ask me uh, where, do, uh, where is your hometown, uh, can I reply that uh, uh, as uh, I live in village which is uh, situated in 10 kilometers away from main city and this city located in Uttar Pradesh, the state of India? It's confusing. No, your hometown is your village. What's the name of your village? Bedpur. Baidpur. So that's what you need to tell me. So my hometown is Baidpur. It's a small village in Uttar Pradesh. It has a population of about 5,000 people. Try that. Okay. So oh, yes, where do you live? Uh, my, my village is Baidpur. Uh, it, is, it has 5,000 people. Okay. And it's in the state of Uttar Pradesh. In the state of Uttar Pradesh. Okay, that's what you want to say. All right, Harpreet, good question. And again, good luck, okay? Lots of practice until then, all right? Lots of speaking. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye for now, Harpreet. All right, thumbs up to Harpreet. That was really great. Um, students, there are so many of you here, and I know I didn't get to some of you, and some of you are very uh, regular students. Uh, Adele Amra Chayani, I will keep an eye out for you. Remember, members, uh, many of the premium students are also uh, members as well. We've got that reading tomorrow, so there's lots of chances there to interact in that first class. And again, um, remember that you can interact with each other. So just like you're messaging me, you can um, message each other. Anna, Fuang, you're in there as well. Many of you have such beautiful language skills uh, and uh, improve them by chatting with each other. Uh, English is not just for British, American, Australia. It's the international language. It's everybody's language. So uh, speak to people from around the world. Um, these days you will use English a lot for people from all over the planet. Okay, so um, again, um, here is the website. You want to join it. And like Juan, uh, you don't have to be taking the IELTS tomorrow to join the website. It's great learning. Um, either way, uh, click that big red button for the premium version. Thank you so much, Carolina, for the assistance you gave to many of our uh, students today. Uh, thumbs up to the chat moderator. We don't thank our chat moderators enough. We need to thank them, right? So I appreciate the thank you, students. Make sure to thank our chat moderators, too. They're doing such a great job, and they're so consistent. Uh, Carolina, Alexi, uh, Chen Wenchen's here. So 
Thank you, Carolina. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, and uh, General IELTS, it's this right here. Again, academic. It's the blue background. Click those big red buttons to join. This class is available. Uh, it's recorded. You can watch it again, review it. I highly recommend that. Okay. Uh, and again, tomorrow we will kick off the a day with um, reading and then we'll go into listening parts three and parts four for subscribers. So definitely subscribe to the channel. Uh, subscribing is free and uh, it's a great way uh, to keep up to date with uh, what we're doing. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from beautiful Victoria for now. Much love to all of you wherever you are in the world. You're all just amazing, beautiful people and you always want to remember that no matter what fortune brings you. Bye for now, everybody.